Thanks everyone very much for coming. So I'm also a little nervous, but I can tell you when you sit on a uh, stand on a red carpet that more, looks more like a bullseye than a lectern, uh, you'll feel my anxiety. It's quite hard. Thank you very much for coming today. This is a. I hope it makes a connection. It's a loose connection between rocket science and rehab. But the reality is, we do do some complicated work. There is some. Uh, research that we're all doing and in fact there's a lot of evidence to support what we're doing so there's two what I hope are contemporary discussions that we're going to have today one is uh, from a landmark article that came out from the British Society of Rehab last late last year is really as, uh, as Tony suggested this was about a 200 page document it really got summarized into probably one slide but it took about two days to read it all through and it was a suggestion that in a acute trauma unit that takes tertiary patients with multi needs that the concept of it being managed by a rehabilitation physician to begin with under that bed card could be a novel idea now that the flow chart for this is quite complicated but essentially it's the major multi-trauma sort of patients that would come in some of the patients would say and their families and their feedback has always been that it's been a somewhat fragmented approach to their uh, journey through trauma Neurosurge, ED, ICU, orthopedics, plastics, everybody's doing the best of what they can do. But in essence, they often have felt that there wasn't someone leading or having a baseline understanding of their journey through them. We get probably 50% of the major multi traumas coming to our rehabilitation service, and the others really go to other sites. The concept really got delivered in the belief that if one team or consultant was connected with the patients right from the word go, that they would be able to take that journey with them. The reality is most of our major, major multi-trauma patients uh, will spend weeks, sometimes months in this service, but they often spend years in rehabilitation. So can we connect them into our service early on? This slide essentially just says uh, a new concept which they brought out in that, in that uh, orange box called hyperacute rehabilitation. So that's a pretty unusual concept for us. Uh, I don't know what hyperacute is. I thought acute was acute, and we certainly don't get to use words like hyperacute in rehabilitation, uh, ultra or super. Any of those words uh, seem to say the Alfred. People sort of think we're in the slightly slower stream sort of program. So we're pretty excited if we can say acute at any stage. So really, the concept is if anybody has a major multi-trauma, we could be part of that patient's journey right from the day one. So not to get confused between what we're suggesting. The next slide is a bit more intuitive. Uh, this is what it might look like to some patients. They get fixed up, they get the best care, then they get referred to us in rehab and then we take over the care. What we might be suggesting, and this is not a un new model for anyone else, it certainly is used, it's being integrated into chronic care, it's also been introduced into palliative care and oncology, that we know in almost in a diverse uh, opposite way is that we know these patients will get better from their care here. We don't really want to do anything to do with the absolute acute but we maybe want to be start, starting with the patients on their journey right from the get-go so we can be a part of the coordinated um, program and interventions that they're having and then take them on that journey with us to rehabilitation and then really into the community and then longer term where we really have, I've got patients who I continue to see five and ten years after the major multi-traumas into the future. It's a model that's used in some services for spinal cord injury that people probably know uh, that the rehabilitation physician is used very early. The second concept, again, is uh, got to do with trauma patients per se. We spend so much time with these patients. Do Are they in the right spot, especially if they're in a non-weight bearing program, if they've got very limited mobility, if they're kind of doing their time until they get their neck cleared, their, you know, their fracture realigned, uh, when, when can they get on with it? So an enriched environment, people probably understand it in concepts of uh, rat models or mice, and also maybe for children uh, out there. That you, the, the concept was originally in the 60s, where um, mice were kept in uh, an environment by themselves, no other intervention put in there, or they were put into uh, areas where they had lots of intervention, lots of stimulation, lots of activity, and what happened. So we know at a scientific and a biological level, the neurons sprout, they activate, their minds become richer, there's physical changes, uh, there's morphological changes, uh, there's psychological changes, all of which occur simply by having an enriched environment. Hospitals are not an enriched environment per se, but our challenge into the future is to make an environment that is enriched. This is again a landmark, uh, this is, sorry, this is uh, evidence that's internationally based. Nobody does better than this. If we were doing as good as this, it would be great. What happens between the hours, working hours, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, what are our patients doing? Well, the reality is they spend 11% of that time in therapy. That's best, that's best standard anywhere in the world. What do they do with the rest of their time? 
Well, unfortunately, most of the time they're staying in their room. And sadly, two-thirds of that time between those working hours is essentially looking around the ward or looking at other patients. We need to find ways of enriching the environments for our patients. The evidence is strong. We know the brain chemistry is strong to make it work. So the latest trial, again, this is from uh, last year. This was an Australian study. Resources are always tight. You can't just add more therapists. You can't give, continue just to give more activities. Uh, so they essentially put a control group, which is standard care, then they put the other group of patients into uh, an environment. They had iPads, they had Wii Fits, they had Nintendos, they had books, they had bingo, they had games, they had volunteers. None of it was a pure mainstream therapy sort of a model. It was a model that they could do themselves. It was a model that their family could be involved in, but it had nothing to do. They didn't increase any time or EFT for therapists or consultants. What they showed, amazingly, was that all the outcomes were better for these patients. Admittedly, this wasn't just for multi-traumas, for a, a big group of uh, rehabilitation clients. Their physical function improved. Their cognitive fun function improved. Uh, their, their socialization was better. They slept less, and they certainly spent a lot less time in their rooms. So that's our challenge, how do we make an enriched environment in a hospital area, which traditionally is not uh, designed like that. Lastly, we say uh, we, we need to find clever ways of enriching these areas to making our multi-trauma patients more integrated into our service, because if I was in a service for six months or so, 11% of my time in therapy is probably just not good enough at the moment. We've got to think harder uh, and better about making our environments richer. Lastly, this is our, one of the pictures of our new ABI unit with a concept built around an enriched environment. We have basketball courts, we have patient dining areas, we have lounge rooms, we have activity levels, all of which are really trying to support the concept for all of us. And maybe as, if there's clinicians here as well to kind of support anything we can do to support a, an enriched environment for the patient in, in anywhere they are through our service. Thank you.